Newcastle today, like a copy of God's Word. Uh, read for yourself, study, digest, meditate upon God's Word. Um, Abel, it says, to um, make you wise, not the wisdom of this world, that is, the wisdom of God is what's meant able to make you wise for salvation uh, this to be found in Jesus Christ read God's word for yourself and uh, see what he says and of course um, here in his word you behold um, his uh, loveliness the beauty of Jesus uh, the one of course um, who is uh, depicted as the Son of God here in God's Word and of course through uh, faith, confidence that is, um, with faith, you know, confide, confide, uh, with faith uh, in Him, Jesus, the Son of God, uh, that you might have life in His name. Like a copy of God's Word, it's offered to you quite freely, uh, yours uh, simply and only for the taking, like one you come and ask for one. The Word of God, uh, Jesus, of course, um, He makes a clear, you know, distinction between, uh, well, what you call, you know, religion, human religion, and uh, and that of grace. You know, Jesus, He came that we might. No experience that is uh, the grace of God. And I would suggest to you this afternoon uh, that it's uh, grace uh, as opposed that is to religion uh, that you need. The grace of God, of course, um, well, it you know, comes from the, the Latin, you know, gratis, free gratis, you know. Uh, you can't uh, do anything for it be anything for it, you can't uh, be religious for it, you can't pay for it, um, it's simply given, you know, freely given to, well, whoever God gives it to, but of course, you know, the Bible does make it clear, God doesn't give his grace to everybody, not everybody can save, not everybody comes to experience the grace of God, just because a person happens to be, you know, of a religious bent, and of course, well, there are many. Yes. Say again. Okay, well, listen. Well, mine, 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 well, mine doesn't matter, you know, I mean, it's, my opinion is no more valid than yours. But if you, if you're asking me what does God say about them, then I'll answer that question. Yeah. He says, uh, just like uh, many, many, many other sins, it's a sin. Oh. And the grace of God. Um, um, let me, let me, let me, let me read for you, please. Uh, just give me a moment. It's a very important question. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, he says here uh, in one Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. He says, "Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God?" Then he starts to give a list, right, of what he means by unrighteous. It's not exhaustive, okay? It's just a, like, um, a taste, if you like, yeah, okay? And he says, um, neither fornicators, that takes outside of marriage, uh, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, as boys that give themselves to men for toys, um, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, as homosexuals, nor thieves, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But here, here's the here's here's the bottom line. This is glorious. This is wonderful. That's that's what that's what that's what many of these who he's writing to these Christians, right? He says, and such were some of you, but you you are washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were saved from those lifestyles. So anything that's contrary to God, anything at all, yeah. But Jesus came with the grace of God to, to, to change, to, 
no, just choose this. Have a good day, yeah? So you see, my friends, um, at the grace of God, we're talking about free gratis, that is, uh, given not to everybody, not everyone uh, that calls me Lord, Lord, says Jesus, shall enter the kingdom of God. Now, the grace of God, it's given to uh, whoever God is pleased to give it to his good pleasure not yours and not mine but of course jesus came the bible tells us jesus came had uh, to bring the grace of god to us um says you know that uh, the law that's the ten commandments the law of god thou shalt not and thou shalt i came by moses um that's back in the old testament but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He came to introduce us to, to bring the grace of God to us, to men and women. All kinds, you know. Um, not everybody, but all kinds, you know. When the, the Bible talks about all men, you know, all people, it doesn't mean uh, everybody head for head. It means all kinds of people, you know, and all kinds of sinners. You know, these, these young people, you know, they're obsessed today with uh, the subject of homosexuality. And I've just been asked the question again, you know, and just about every time I venture out in the street, I get some young person asking me that question. What about gays? What about homosexuals? Well, it might interest you to know that the word homosexual is not actually in the Bible. You'll find it in modern translations of the Bible, but it's not in the original. That word, homosexual, is a very modern word, historically speaking. But you see, the grace of God comes to even such as they, the Bible says, such for some of you, he says to um, uh, the Christians of Corinth, but by the grace of God, they were washed uh, they were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He brought grace to them, and that grace transformed them. That grace brought them to see him, brought them to a realization uh, that their way, their lifestyle, uh, was contrary uh, to God and to God's holy law. And the grace of God changed them. So, you see, my friends, uh, uh, th there are many stripes, there are many kinds of sinners, big sinners, great sinners, uh, but the bottom line is that we're all sinners. I mean, even without, you know, extract homosexuality from it, take away drunkenness from it, take away any sin you like to, to name idolatry, take that aside, and you're still a sinner. You're still a sinner because you see, the, the thing is, you know, what God's word reveals to us is that we are conceived in sin in a mother's womb. And then nine months later, you're born in sin. Uh, you come into the world shaping in iniquity and lawlessness. And so you see, my friends, before you've spoken a word, thought a thought, before you've done anything, you, you're a sinner. So take all these... Um, you know, your favorite stripe of sin, whatever it might be, uh, the obsession uh, with homosexuality today, take that aside, you're still sinners. We're all of us. That's how we're born, that's how we come into the world. But you see, it's because we got those sinful natures, that's what comes out of them. Drunkenness, revilers, idolaters, and yes, homosexuals too. So you see, my friends, all these things, everything that's contrary to God and to his holy law, to his love. And, and do remember, will you please, you know, the law, God's law, his commandments are not given to us to restrict us. They're, 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 not, they're, not, they're not restrictive, my friends. They're, they're, a, they're a shield. They're a fence. They're, they're, they're to keep us from such lawlessness that breaks us, that ruins us 
that destroys us. But of course, because we have sinful natures, what we dislike, what we hate, uh, the law of God is grievous to us. We see it as being restricted. Why? Because you want to live out of your sinful nature. You want to do what pleases you and not what pleases God, but that's the sinful nature. And so that's why you have all these, this list of sins and more. So you see, it's grace, it's grace that's needed. The grace of God, you know, that God, well, God gives to men and women, you know, through the preaching of the gospel, you know, hearing about their sin, convicting them, and bringing to them that which they need, the necessary repentance turning from their sin, and faith towards His Son, Jesus Christ, and living out of grace instead of living out of your sinful nature. The grace of God, you see, that transforms, that transforms, that, that reforms, you know, that um, makes the bad good. Jesus, he puts it this way. He says in John's Gospel, he says, you must be born again. In other words, the grace of God must be experienced. Yeah, people hear about it, all they sing about it, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The world sings about it, you sing about it, but you have no idea what it means. You've never experienced it, you've never tasted it, not unless that is, of course, God, by His Son, Jesus Christ, has visited you, has brought that grace to you. So I tell you, in the words of Jesus, you must be born again. You must come, you must come, you see, to a, an experience of God's grace, His transforming grace and love that is able to change, able to transform uh, the worst, the vilest of sinners and make them children of God by His grace, children of grace. It's grace, my friends, not religion. So Jesus, He says in Matthew's Gospel, He says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. Those that is, you know, not uh, those who do the will of God, not professors of religion. He talks in the same chapter, he talks about, you know, a false prophets, false preachers, false religions, and you all the bounds with them. I'm told that Oxford University Press says that up to date there are 9,900 religions in your world today, and not an ounce of grace in any one of them. Grace is to be found in the Son of God in Jesus Christ alone. So you see, it's grace, not uh, religion, and not even the profession, you know. Uh, Jesus, he says, uh, he says uh, just before this, he says, um, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but again, he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, cast out devils, done many wonderful works? Oh, yes, there'll be many. The day of judgment will reveal some very weird and very strange things. There'll be men and women, I tell you, with Bibles in their hands, sliding down the slippery slope into the damnation of hell. Why? Because Jesus never knew them. He will say to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. So you see, it's not your reception of Jesus, it's his reception of you. It's not your profession of him, it's his profession of you. Does he know you? Has he come to you? Has he graced your heart? Have you been born again? Are you a new creature in Jesus Christ? And do you live according to his Father's will? Do you do these things of his? For he says many, many, not a few, not a handful, but many, many people who profess religion, you know, profess to be religious, attend to the religion, all so very diligently and they dress in religious clothes 
and you think to yourself when you see their appearance, oh, they must be holy people, they must be very godly people, not so, says Jesus. The very contrary, many of them will say to me in that day, didn't we do this, that, and the other? Weren't we religious above all other men? And Jesus will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. They never did. They never obeyed God. They never knew what it was to repent of their sin. In fact, they never even knew what sin was. They thought that their religion and their religious practice covered their sin. Not so. Not by the works of the flesh. God says, shall any, anyone ever be justified, made right in his sight? Takes the grace of God. Takes the grace and the love of God, my friend. The grace of God being imparted to you. And of course, while bringing about this transformation, washing you, sanctifying you. And of course, justifying you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, making you right with God. We need justifying because, you see, to justify somebody is to make them right. And we need justifying before God because we're not, naturally speaking. We come into the world in sin, with sinful natures, and live out of those natures, doing all kinds of evil deeds, wickedness. But you see, my friends, you're simply to acknowledge, well, yes, I'm not perfect. Things I've done wrong, you know, that I ought not to have done, that I regret doing, that's not the same, my friends, as knowing your sin. Only God can reveal your sin and the extent of your sin to you. But God does that in his grace. When he comes by grace to a sinner, you see, he reveals to them. He reveals their sin to them. And they're convicted, you see, of their sin. They're convicted, you see. And they, they weep, they mourn, they howl, they lament because of their sin. And they know, they know that there's only, they're brought to the realization there's only one person who can deal with their sin. All, all the religion in the world won't do that. Only the one who died on the cross. And there's only one who did that. Not the Pope of Rome. Not the Watchtower Society. Not even, not even Muhammad died for sinners on the cross. Only Jesus did that and rose again from the dead. He's the only mediator. Uh, it says God's word between God and men. The only man, the only one who can bring you back to God because he's the only one who died on the cross to pay the price for sin, to reconcile you to God, to justify you, to make you right with God. Only Jesus. I tell you, friends, this afternoon, whether you know it, whether you realize it or not, you need Jesus. You need him more than you need to breathe. So you see, uh, grace and religion, two different things altogether. You can be religious, not the same. You can be a churchgoer, you know, you can have knowledge of the Bible. You can quote it, perhaps, and you can claim to have done wonderful things, maybe even being, uh, as I am here today, a preacher of God's Word, but never, never having been visited by the grace of God, never been transformed from the inside out. It's the inside, you see, that God's concerned with. God looks upon the heart, not the outside, not the appearance. God's not fooled by a person's appearance. You can wear a dog collar, a long frock, a scarf, a bandage around your neck. You think that impresses God? It's your heart that he looks at, my friend. What does he see in your heart? Well, he says concerning these religious leaders in his day, he uh, condemns them, he declares them, he says, he says, you're like whited gravestones, but down deep underneath in your hearts, he says, there's nothing but rotten flesh. They were hypocrites. Their religion was a sham, just like the most of your religion in your world today. So you see, my friends, 
you have to understand. You have to get to grips with God's word. What God's word says, not what men say. Anyone? I'm sure you do, my dear. But there's not a chance. There's not a chance of. There's not a chance of that in heaven, my dear. Not a chance. So, like I say, my friends, you can go to the church till you're blue in the face, but um, that won't save you. That won't bring the grace of God to you. Only Jesus can do that. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So he says here, again, Matthew's Gospel, he says, uh, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. It's the wise person, you see. But even just hearing the word of God, as you do, here Tuesday by Tuesday in Newcastle, I can tell you, I can point you in the direction, right direction, I can say to you, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Oh, I can tell you, I can speak the words of God to you, and you can hear them, but that won't save you, not lest you do them. Not, not unless you do the will of God. What is the will of God? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not kill by means of abortion, euthanasia, drugs, violence, any which way. Thou shalt not kill, says God, because life is sacred to God. And then the other commandments like it, thou shalt not commit adultery, which covers your pornography, uh, your deviant sexuality today, the whole nine yards. Thou shalt not, says God. So you see, my friends, um, doing the will of God. But here you are with a sinful nature and not able to do the will of God. Powerless, impotent. I challenge you, take one of those commandments, any one you like, and declare to yourself that you'll keep that commandment all the days of your life from now on. You won't get past the first 24 hours. You won't get past the first 12 hours before you break it. Because you see, you've got a sinful nature that hates God's law, hates God and hates your neighbor. The sum of God's commandments, Jesus says, is that you should love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and that you should love your neighbor as yourself. But you do neither. You don't love God, you hate him. You don't love your neighbor, you hate your neighbor. You kill your neighbor. Your neighbor, your neighbor's the unborn child in his mother's womb, killed by abortion. Thou shalt not kill, says God. So, you see, my friend, powerless, unable to keep God's law. You don't even have the desire, you don't even have the will to do so. And that's why, you see, you need God's grace, God's transforming grace. That's what makes the difference. Because when a man, a woman, you see, has been reborn, born again, they're able to see as never they saw before. Except you be born again, says Jesus, you cannot see, perceive, understand the kingdom of God, let alone enter into it. So you see, when grace comes, the grace of God illumines, you see, enables us to understand the gospel. You know, it's just a, you know, it's just a, a fairy tale to you until God by his grace comes and enlightens, illumines your sin-darkened mind, and you're able to see your disobedience, you're able to see your lawlessness, you're able to see your sin as never before. And all oh, led by grace to trust in his Son, uh, Jesus Christ, that you might be forgiven, that you might be pardoned, that you might be justified by God's grace, made right with God by his grace. And you see, when Jesus talks about a man, a woman being born again, he's talking about, he's talking about a, a miracle, a, a supernatural act of God. God comes, you see, and he puts his life into the soul of a man or woman. And they live for the first time in their life. Prior to that, you just exist. You just exist. 
You're, you're born into a, an earthly existence that goes on for a while, however, however many years God permits you. And then you go out of the world never ever having lived. If you've not had the grace of God imparted to you, you've never lived. No, when the grace of God comes, you see, you're born again, then God imparts his life to you, his life into your soul, and his love into your heart, so that you hate what God hates, your sin that is, and you love what God loves, his righteousness. He justifies you, he makes you right, you're able to see, you see for the first time in your life, to understand, to get it, what it is that's required of you. And it's not just religion. It's obeying, it's doing God's will. And of course, well then, because of grace, well, you're able, not perfectly, but you're able to keep God's law. You have a desire to keep God's law. You have a desire to do these things, these things that Jesus tells you to do. You're able to repent of your sin and go on repenting of your sin and believe and go on believing, trusting, not in yourself, not in any religious works, not in anything you do, but trusting Jesus. only, trusting in Jesus Christ alone and in no other. He, he, my friend, He's the one to trust, the only one, the only one who can bring you back to God from sin's dark path, the only one who can set you free from the law of sin and death, make you alive. So he says, you know, the whosoever hears these sayings of mine, hears the word of God and does them, Jesus, he likens this, this person to being a wise man, a wise woman. Wisdom, my friends, wisdom from God, the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, of course, not like the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness, that which they teach you in your schools and colleges, the folly of evolution, the folly, the foolishness of false religion, ah, trusting in some measure of morality, but you see, even your, even your evolutionism, even, even that's hypocrisy, isn't it? You say, I believe in evolution. I don't believe that there is a God. I believe there's a big bang. I believe in Darwin. I believe in evolution. That's my religion, you see. But you're a hypocrite because you don't. Because you see, you cling to some form, some measure of morality. Where does that come from? That comes from the Bible. So you see, my friends, if you truly believed evolution, you would be the most lawless person in all the universe. But you cling to your morality. Why? Because you know inwardly in your heart, you know that God is. And you are without excuse. Because God, you see, has indelibly imprinted upon your very soul his existence. So all the arguments, young people, they come to me with their arguments, you know, for their for their foolish evolutionary religion, but I don't, I don't take them on, I don't answer them, I don't debate with them, because they know, just like you, they know that there is a God, because of all the things that God has made, and because God has given them an innate knowledge of himself. So whoever you are, O oh man, you are without excuse. The grace of God's what's needed. To open your eyes that you might see, your heart that you might believe, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and be justified. Do what he tells you, do these sayings of mine. That's the wise man. Do these sayings of mine. What are the sayings that he would have you to do? Repent ye and believe the gospel, he said. Repentance, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thoughts. The thinking, the mindset, you see, altered, completely changed. Now you see the universe, the world, mankind, everything made for God's glory and yourself included, not just for your sinful pleasure. Now, now you turn from such a mindset 
and you begin to align your thoughts with God's thoughts after him, and it changes radically, revolutionizes your mind, your heart, your conduct, everything. Let the wicked forsake his way, his practice, his way of living, his sinful lifestyle, and let the unrighteous man forsake his thinking, his thoughts. That's repentance, you see, and faith. Faith towards the Son of God, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the command with the promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. A promise, a command with an assurance of salvation. If you believe in your heart, if you confess with your mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised his son from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believing the gospel, my friends, the good news that Jesus came to bring the grace of God to us, that Jesus came and lived and loved and died for sinners upon that cross to reconcile them to God, to bring them into the favor of God, the grace of God, the merciful kindness of God, to forgive everything, all that they ever did, and to make them alive and alive forevermore. I give unto them eternal life, he says. That comes with grace too, and they shall never perish. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Only believers, and believers are they that do the sayings of Jesus, and he likens them to wise men and women. Wisdom, my friends, get wisdom from the Word of God, of course. And he says, um, he goes on to say, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. The storms of life's trials come to this wise person, obedient to God. <laughs> but the storms of life cannot shift, cannot move them from the rock. That rock, of course, is Jesus Christ himself. They're founded, they're settled upon that rock, and they cannot be moved from it. Of course, um, well, the storm of death comes to them just the same as to others. Supported, don't you know, unto man wants to die. After this, well then, uh, says God, after this then comes the judgment. But this wise person, you see, who has built his house upon a rock, his life founded upon the sayings of Jesus, that is, this wise person, you see, on the rock, immovable, even in the storm of life's trials, the cancer, the viruses, the car accidents, whatever it might be. Yeah, the storms of life are great and many, and they come to many of you, and they just sweep you away because you're not prepared for them. You're not resting upon the rock, obedient to God's will. And so you're swept away in the storms and trials of life. But then, of course, comes the storm of death. That's not the ultimate, but that comes. It's appointed, divinely appointed. A day, a day I tell you, a decade, a year, a month, a day, an hour marked on God's calendar, when you personally will breathe your last and go out of this world. It comes to all men, divinely appointed. Oh, it's a real storm. It's, uh, it's reckoned, the Bible calls it the king of terror. And of course, well, be a terror to you unless, of course, you're drugged up to your eyeballs by the medics. And then, of course, well, after that, you've got the judgment. That dreadful and awful day when God judges you for all your sins and even, even I tell you for this occasion, when you heard about the grace of God, but you would have none of it. And so you're faced, you're left to face the storm, the storms of life trials, the storms of death, and the storm of God's judgment. You're left to face it all alone. 
without Jesus. That will be a dreadful and an awful day for you. Do not wish that for you. Wish that you would put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would be today be a recipient of the grace of God. But then he goes on to talk about the foolish builder. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Can you imagine a builder building a house on sand? No foundation, no rock underneath. You would say the man's a nutter fool. He's a nutcase, you would say. Well, that's you, says Jesus. If you hear his words and don't do what he tells you to do, don't repent of your sin. Don't believe, trust in him. He likens you likewise to a fool. And of course, well, elsewhere in the Bible, God says, you know, it's the fool who says in his heart that there is no God. So you see, my friends, they hear the words. They hear the words of life and salvation. They hear about God's plan of escape, but they do nothing with it. They hear, and they just walk on by. Not for me, they say. How shall we escape, says the Bible, if we neglect so great salvation? Answers logical. Bible doesn't answer the question. The answer is logical, you shall not escape the flames, the fires of hell. If you carry on in your foolishness, hearing the words of Jesus and not doing them, dull, foolish, ignorant, careless, couldn't be bothered, don't do what Jesus tells you to do. And many, of course, many, I have to say many do, do build their lives upon sand. Is your life built today on the sand of unbelief? The foolish notion and delusion that's fed to you in schools from kindergarten all the way through to university and on? The foolish Darwinian nonsense, a life built on the sand of unbelief. And in that day when the storms come, you're washed away. Everything, everything that you ever did, everything you ever were, washed away in the storm when it comes. And then, of course, there are those who build their lives upon the dictates of false religion, Islam, Roman Catholicism, Watchtower Society, Buddhism, we could go on all afternoon, we won't, but we could. Built on the foundation of false religion that's not according to God's word. If it's not according to this word, says God, it's because there's no light in them, only darkness. Nothing but darkness, my friend. No light at all, my friend. To get that, you have to go to the light of God's Word, a light to your feet, a lamp to your path. You have to go to the light of the world, Jesus. Go to Him. He'll give you light. But to build your life on the foolish notion of false religion. And of course, even, well, maybe perhaps who knows somebody attending a church all their days, religiously, hearing the truth of God's Word week after week after week, but never, never actually coming to the place of obeying, of doing what Jesus commands you to do. Repent and believe the gospel. Receive the grace of God that you might be saved. Many are deceived by shady, I say shady, shady estate agents, you know. And they think they bought a fine house, but in the end they find it's full of cracks, you know. The foundations are rotten and the thing's falling apart. And many people, of course, are deceived by false prophets and false teachers who come to them, selling them a mess of religion, damnable religion. And they find at the end, 
when the ultimate test comes, when the storm comes, they find that they've been deceived, that they've been sold a mess of false religion, damnable religion. So the storms come, you see, to the wise and to the foolish. The storms of life come to them just the same. The cancer, the virus, the car accident comes to us all just the same. Surely, surely as the sparks fly upwards, man is born to trouble, the Bible says. No, many of the trials that come to the foolish, and what happens to them? Well, they turn to the drink, they turn to the drugs, they go off the rails, they're swept away in the, st in the trials of life, they're washed away with them, destroyed. But then, of course, comes, comes the storm of death. The grim reaper comes, calling upon them, knocking upon their door. And you see, whether you be a king or a street preacher, everybody faces the grim reaper. And he comes with his slimy fingers and wraps them round their souls and draws the soul out of the body and returns it to God from whence it came to be dispatched by Jesus. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That's the end of your foolishness. Be a wise man. Do what Jesus says. Because the supreme test comes, you see, at the end. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The final storm, the raging torrent of God's wrath. The Bible says, don't you know that the wrath of God is already revealed from heaven against all your ungodliness and unrighteousness and you're holding down the truth and unrighteousness? It's already revealed day by day, my friends. It's all over your society, your world. Can't you see it? Can't you see it? The wrath of God in Afghanistan and Iraq. Can't you see it in your own country? Ah, huh? The rape of young girls in Hanley just the other night. Huh? In the name of their religion, I ask you. Huh? You see, my friends, it's the, it's the judgment, it's the wrath of God on your unbelief, on your foolishness. And there's more to come. There's more to come, that's now, revealed now. But more, more to come, my friends. The wrath to come, the judgment of God, the full, fearsome, frightful wrath of God that will burn against you for all eternity in the damnation of hell. Unless the grace of God comes to you, unless God imparts grace to you, Unless God, unless God puts you upon his rock, Jesus Christ. Only God himself, you see, can put you there. You can't put yourself there. He's too high up for you. You can't reach him. You're a fallen, broken sinner. You have no power, no strength. You can't get up there yourself. God himself has to put you up there. Only he can put you in Christ. But that's the grace of God, you see. The grace that he brings to sinners, lost and undone, foolish, unbelieving, dead, blinded in their hearts and in their minds. But through the preaching of the gospel, that which I'm doing here today, foolishness to those who are perishing, foolishness to the foolish, Foolishness to the foolish. Yeah. But the power of God to those who are being saved. It's by this means that God awakens sinners. It's by this means that God brings sinners to a conviction of their sin, of their need. Causes them to see that they need Jesus more than they need anything else. And brings them brings them to that place 
of being willing to swim shark-infested waters to get to Jesus. Because more than anything else, they need God's forgiveness. They need God's grace. They need God's love. They need God's favor. But only God in his sovereign, merciful kindness can do that for you. But you remain building, building, building day by day, building on the sand. The end of it will be, says Jesus, catastrophic, great, mega, will be the fall in that day. There's a man coming round, and he's taking names. And he's the one who decides who to bless and who to blame. Jesus, judge Jesus. Day has been appointed when he will judge the world in righteousness by his son, Jesus Christ. A dreadful and awful day. Awful day, my friends. Without you do, without you do what Jesus tells you to do, without obedience to Jesus, Jesus the Savior and Jesus the Judge, they're both the same. Do what he tells you to do. Be a wise man. And what does he tell you to do? He tells you to repent and believe the gospel that he died for sinners and rose again from the dead to save sinners. Repent ye and believe the gospel, he said. Do what he tells you to do, because the Bible says he's coming. He's coming with his holy angels, don't you know, in flaming fire to take vengeance upon all that know not God and who obey not the gospel who do not obey, who do not do what he says, who do not do his saying. Foolish people, foolish people. He's coming to take vengeance upon them. He's coming to judge them. So escape, my friends, I bid you. Escape this coming judgment, the wrath of God. Call upon the name of the Lord, well, you may. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, that is, shall be saved. Salvation. Salvation by grace. Grace alone, not religion. Grace you need, my friends. Grace. Wonderful, wonderful heart, life, eternal transformation by the wonderful grace and love of God in Jesus Christ. That's what you need more than anything else. Any other need that you have today, you need my Lord Jesus Christ because grace and truth came by him. Believe the truth and it will make you free, he said. Receive the grace of God and be transformed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do his saying, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, he says, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, Newcastle, and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you would like to have a copy of God's Word, check these things out for yourself. See that the so according to God's Word, take my word for it, take the words of Jesus himself, home with you, read, study, digest, meditate upon the lovely person of Jesus. Maybe he bring grace to you today. I hope so. I pray so. You would like a copy of God's Word? Do feel free to come and ask for one. For one. It's really offered to you. No cost, no obligation to you. May God bless you, Newcastle, and of mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, 
precious, never-dying souls.